A universe whose future is plagued by the acceleration of dark matter, the cosmological constant is inevitably evolving towards a future of emptiness and darkness. As the rate of expansion continues to accelerate, there's more and more empty space and thus more dark energy, an unstoppable positive feedback loop. Eventually, all stars will have burned up, black holes will have decayed like everything else, and only exponentially expanding space will remain. This is de-sitter space. Given this ever-expanding space, does that mean the universe truly ends? To answer this question, we must venture into the depths of entropy and the arrow of time. How will the universe end? In this multi-part series, I explain one of the most likely and arguably the most likely scenario, heat death. In addition to how heat death can lead to the birth of a new universe, perhaps one precisely the same as ours. Don't worry, we'll get to that and much more throughout this series. To understand all the complexities of heat death, there are quite a few mind-bending concepts that I've set the stage with. Over the prior episodes, I explained why the universe is not only expanding, but accelerating in the rate of expansion. Consequently, distant galaxies have now started to disappear, as well as why this process is irreversible. This is the final episode of How Will the Universe End? Whenever a star burns out, a particle decays, or even a black hole evaporates, matter is converted into free radiation. This free radiation spreads through the universe as heat, pure, disordered energy. When something is reduced to heat radiation, its entropy is thus increased to the maximum, since there are no longer any restrictions on the flow of energy. Now, as the universe continues to expand, you might assume that this radiation becomes diluted, and perhaps the entropy should consequently drop as temperature does, but this does not occur. As Katie Mack, the author of The End of Everything, explains, when the universe reaches a state of steady exponential expansion, you could define a radius from wherever you are, beyond which the rest of the cosmos is forever hidden. It's a true horizon in the sense that nothing beyond it could ever reach you. It turns out that this horizon, like a black hole's horizon, also has entropy associated with it, and thus a temperature. The difference is that instead of the heat going out like it does with a black hole, it goes in. The temperature is very small, something like 10 to the power of negative 40 degrees above absolute zero. But when everything else has decayed, this radiation is all that is left to contain all the entropy of the universe. When the universe gets this pure de-sitter state, it is a maximum entropy universe. From that point on, there is no way for the universe's total energy to increase, which means, in a very real sense, the arrow of time is gone. If you recall from the last episode, or even this video right here, the arrow of time and the second law of thermodynamics is absolutely essential to the functioning of the universe. If there is no longer a way for entropy to increase, consequently, it is no longer possible for any organized structures or any form of evolution to exist at all. Energy moving from one place to another is required for anything to really happen at all. Energy gradients are the basis of everything that performs some kind of work, and they can no longer exist in a universe which is essentially just a huge, very cold heat bath. But there are some exceptions, and these exceptions are not minor. In fact, they change everything. When it comes to the quantum scale, or even large scales, if you wait long enough, and by long, I really mean very, very long, not the kind some men will describe one of their organs as. If you wait long enough, unpredictable fluctuations will spontaneously shift some parts of the system into a low entropy state at random. Now, if you saw this video, you might already know where I'm heading with this. But anyway, the larger the system is, the less likely it is that fluctuations can do anything at all. However, when it comes to a universe that is eternally accelerating in expansion and contains only a cosmological constant, there is certainly a lot of time and space for something to occur, no matter how extremely rare it is. If there is a probability for something, no matter how vastly low that probability is, it will occur given infinite time. In fact, it will occur an infinite amount of times. It is extremely unlikely that a full-built piano will randomly spawn in empty space, but with infinite time, in principle, it can happen. Well, if anything can spontaneously pop into existence due to these fluctuations, then a universe very well can too. And again, in principle, given infinite time, technically, it has to eventually occur. 
no matter how long it takes. In statistical mechanics, there's a principle that states that any arrangement of particles in a system will eventually find itself in that same position once again. The less likely that configuration though, the longer it will take. This is called the Poincaré recurrence. Thus, if you have an infinite amount of time to work with, any state can be in is a state that it will be in again for an infinite amount of times. The reoccurrence time would be determined by how rare that occurrence is. For example, Physicists Anthony Aguar, Sean Carroll, and Matthew Johnson calculated that if you were to wait around a trillion times the age of the universe, a very long time, you could watch an entire piano randomly assemble itself in an empty box. Post-heat death universe is essentially just one giant box for all these random fluctuations to occur with infinite time. If the Big Bang is a state the universe has been in once, and the post-heat death universe is eternal, aka infinite time, then it not only can, but will occur again an infinite amount of times. With that said, this moment right now, as you are watching this video, still not subscribed without any notifications on, can occur exactly as everything is an infinite amount of times. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard the Big Bounce Theory. Well, this is unlikely to occur. Perhaps I'll make a video explaining why. Same goes for the Big Crunch, but that does not mean that the universe cannot be born again. It's just a different way, and it is this way through heat death and random fluctuations over infinite time that it is actually extremely realistic. For all we know, this may not be the first universe. Something very interesting to ponder is, can your precise consciousness be recreated and thus you could live again through this? Or, alternatively, do you believe it would be similar to uploading your consciousness to a computer, essentially making a copy while you still die forever? I have no idea, but I'd like to explore this in a philosophy video one day, and we'll come back to this later. In fact, Nietzsche was known for considering this possibility before he even knew that this was actually physically possible, before the concept of heat death was known to anybody. One of our most famous philosophers might have actually gotten it right. Now wait, it gets even more insane. According to this, it's actually extremely more likely that your exact brain, with all of its memories and abilities, can spontaneously appear in a closed, safe environment in random space where it can imagine this precise scenario since even lower entropy would be required for the entire Big Bang compared to this. So according to probability, it is more likely that we live in a simulation? Personally, I was never a big fan of the simulation theory, but whenever that simulation theory is spoken about, it's rarely ever explained in this manner. Rather, it's explained in terms of some intentionally created program, which I feel is stupid since there have never been any recorded glitches. This, however, is the Boltzmann brain problem, and it's actually quite reasonable. However, I personally disagree with this, as do many physicists and cosmologists. Despite the lower change of entropy required for it, it still might be much more likely for a Big Bang to occur, and I'll explain why that is. Some cosmologists argue that it is much more likely for a de-sitter universe to create a low entropy state like the Big Bang, rather than something small on the brink of reabsorption. The argument here is that recreating a low entropy state might seem to require a lot of quantum fluctuation energy, but actually takes out only a little bit of total entropy from the system as a whole. However, other cosmologists still disagree with this, so we may never truly know if this is a simulation or not. Personally, I'm on the side that it is more likely for a low entropy state such as the Big Bang to reoccur, but what does my opinion matter? I'd like to hear your opinions in the comments down below. Under the assumption that this perspective is indeed accurate, my biggest question still remains. When the universe is recreated through the same exact Big Bang an infinite amount of times, is our own consciousness also perfectly recreated, or will it just be a copy? In other words, can we live again our exact same lives without even knowing it? Or will it just be a copy, like uploading your consciousness to a computer? No matter which is the case, I do find something very special in this possibility, and that is hope. Hope that perhaps we could live again. And perhaps we already have an infinite amount of times without even knowing. Just the fact that this is a physical possibility gives me hope. And if I have to live this same life again an infinite amount of times, you bet I'm going to live my best possible life. And I hope you guys do too. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been How the Universe Ends and Perhaps Restarts. Subscribe and enable post notifications for more.